Thanks everyone for joining our workshop to intro into JS functional testing at scale. Let me introduce ourselves first. I'm Christian. I'm currently working at the open source program office here at Toss Labs. Many people maybe know me as a maintainer of Rep.io. I do, I have a lot of other hats as well. I'm helping the W3C standardizing the WebDAO protocol for cross-browser automation and working in a task for helping our engineering team be a good open source citizen. My name is Nikolai Advalotkin. I'm a senior solutions architect here at Sauce Labs. All that title ultimately means is that I am a geek that's passionate about testing and automated testing in general. Started my career in manual testing over 10 years ago and then transitioned to automated testing. Have been doing it ever since. And because I love it so much, I even started a blog where I can talk about test automation in my spare time because I have nothing better to do. And now I work for Sauce Labs basically with customers all over the world, um, helping advise in different kinds of test automation strategies, whether writing like more unit tests or API tests, uh, UI tests, it doesn't matter, just creating an overall strategy to help uh, teams move faster, more efficiently and do better testing. Our agenda today is as follows. We will start with a little introduction presentation um, to set the tone and give you some kind of introduction about the how browser automation has evolved over the years. It's kind of like a light version of my talk that uh, is going to happen tomorrow, really light version of it. But it, it's a good introduction when we talk about uh, JavaScript and automation testing in general. And if we speak about all these fr frameworks that are out there, you know, to get you an idea about, you know, where these frameworks come from, how, how the, what the reason of their existence, let's say, are, and, uh, you know, how everything came together as it is right now. So then we have a GitHub repository where we have prepared a bunch of tasks and challenges for you to uh, start working on. Um, and we will support you on that way. Um, we will start with setting up on the our test suite. Uh, here, we will mainly focus in this workshop on WebDriver.io as it really helps us to really dig into all the areas in automation testing. We would love to have, you know, used all the frameworks uh, for all areas, but sometimes not possible. Uh, so we use the one that possible that um, can be used with all topics that we prepare. Then um, we start with our test suite setup. Uh, we will look into reporters and services. That means how we can add reporting and how we can, you know, encapsulate our automation code much better into services. We look into network marking, something that WebDriver uh, now supports as well. Uh, so we will mark API endpoints so that um, front-end engineers you know, don't have to deploy the whole uh, application from end to end, just focus on the uh, front-end application. Um, then we want to bring this into CI CD and uh, ultimately scale this up, which is you know, the, the main part our uh, workshop is about. And lastly, we have some extras uh, where we look into some visual and performance testing approaches, uh, which are exciting as well. So I want to start giving a little bit overview about you know what's what has happened in the last decade. Browser automation is, has been around for a long time already, and um, it has been interesting how it has evolved given all these developments that happen in the web ecosystem. Uh, it all started with Jason Huggins, who created an approach who wanted to automate. Uh, uh, expense tool at ThoughtWorks, uh, and, and he needed a tool to automate that. Um, and um, some of his engineers, they were all using uh, the latest Firefox, and a lot of his business colleagues, they were using Internet Explorer. So there was a challenge of get, ha keeping the application healthy on both browsers. So that person, Jason, created a, a tool that is called Selenium, or a project that's called Selenium. Um, almost a year later, uh, another person came around called Simon Stewart, who, uh, invent, uh, who created a new automation tool that is called WebDriver. And you know, this kind of like idea of browser automation evolved over time, even to a point where Jason thought it would be a good idea to create a company or found a company, uh, which was Sauce Labs. And then over the years, it was it became more and more apparent that. Um, each of these projects, uh, the Selenium project and the WebDriver project, they were working fine, but they all had their limitation. Uh, Selenium back then, which was running similar like Cypress in the browser, they had their limitation around uh, certain browser automation uh, methodologies, like changing the size of the browser window, things like that, that you cannot do when you run inside the browser. 
On the other side, Simon with WebDriver had some problems automating elements on the website. Um, and so both went, got together and thought it would be a good idea to merge these projects um, and call the project Selenium WebDriver from there on. In addition, uh, a couple of years later, it became even more apparent that this project, Selenium WebDriver, was not able to maintain all these different browser uh, uh, drivers anymore. Uh, and that for true cross browser automation that works on all browsers the same way, it was necessary to create a web standard around it. Um, so uh, David Burns, uh, who's currently working at BrowserStack, he uh, initiated a working group at the WPC together with Simon to create standard around to make sure that the click in Chrome, for instance, works the same way as when you do a click in Safari on, uh, on web. This kind of like created really uh, a lot of you know, trust in the ecosystem, which was the reason why a lot of new automation framework came around. Um, uh, one is for instance, WebDriver.io, who was, uh, the first commit was 2011. Um, but we also see uh, Projector and uh, the official Selenium bindings being released in the NPM ecosystem. Um, and also interesting, uh, we see other projects popping up like the Appium project that bring the same concept to the mobile space. Then, however, something interesting happened. At some point around that time, uh, we see a lot of new front-end frameworks popping up in the space. Uh, we have React View, Angular versus Two, and Svelte that kind of like ultimately changed, change, have changed the way we build front-end applications um, uh, these days. Uh, so, what has been a static web application, uh, a static web server that would serve static applications uh, for most of the time? now becomes a full-fledged JavaScript-only uh, single-page application with a lot of JavaScript um, that needs to be automated. And that kind of also changed the way, uh, changed the amount or changed the requirements people and front-end engineers had when they wanted to test uh, the applications. And that created a new kind of drive in this space. Uh, we see that companies like Cypress.io got founded uh, and building new kind of tools that use new approaches for browser automation um, to address all these new requirements content developers have. In addition to Cypress IO, we see other releases like Test Cafe, uh, Puppeteer, and last year, Playwright, that all take a different kind of approach of automation how um, people used to be. However, the web standard that the, which initiative was created in 2012 um, was still being developed during all that time. And as it is with standards, um, once you, you know, work on the standard, it is difficult to, to, to rewrite it from scratch. So the goal of the working group at the WCC was it to finish up the specification, which happened in 2018, and start immediately work on a new one to address the same issues that we've seen in the ecosystem. And that's what happens uh, today where we see uh, a new effort, a new standard being developed by all the browser vendors that uh, you know, addresses the issues that we see that makes tools like Cypress, Puppet Key Player ID successful to bring this into a standard and allow them to, to do that cross browser. So with that, we can kind of like uh, group the tools that we have out there into two categories. Um, I call them conventional and the non-standard tool. Um, we have conventional, we have tools like WebDriver.io, Selenium, and Nightwatch, where on the other side, uh, we have um, Cypress, Puppeteer, Playwright, Tesla. And all of them use uh, different automation strategies. We have Cypress and Tesla on the one side that use web APIs um, to automate the browser. So it's essentially JavaScript running next to your application in the browser that triggers certain, you know, finding an element, finding um, text of an element, um, all these uh, sorts of commands, it's being triggered within the website, within the browser. Uh, we have Puppeteer and Playwright that use the browser APIs, which used to be done by WebDriver, uh, with the WebDriver project, um, but these days we have much more sufficient and uh, exhaustive browser APIs that allow much more automation in a reliable way. And we have lastly Selenium and WebDriver.io, um, that use that still rely on the web, uh, web driver protocol. However, interestingly enough, we have, for instance, WebDriver.io and Cypress, they both use a mixture of both. Uh, they both use the browser APIs as some workarounds. Cypress, for instance, to save screenshots 
And browser, I, uh, WebDriver.io uses browser APIs to allow performance testing or uh, PWA uh, tests um, as part of um, you know, your end-to-end -end test. So to sum this up, um, there are essentially three today, three ways how you can automate browser through JavaScript APIs, the browser APIs, and through the WebDriver protocol. Um, the JavaScript APIs that tools like Cypress and TestCafe use is actually one of the first generation of automating the browser as it has been used by Selenium back in 2004 already. Uh, it provides a lot of control um, and um, comes, however, with a limitation of only running within the browser. Uh, so there comes some limitation with it that you need to consider um, when, you, when you pick that framework. On the other side, we have uh, browser APIs that are uh, that is being used by Puppeteer, Playwright, um, that are the, my opinion, second generation of browser automation as WebDriver used to do that approach through, for instance, com interfaces back then in the Internet Explorer times, uh, where they were using a lot of um, browser extensions to trigger automation in the browser. Um, so um, this is kind of, for me, the second generation of browser automation. Today, these browser APIs are a really high amount of commands and events that you can listen to. Uh, however, they are different for each browser. That, that means that uh, you can only automate one browser at a time. Luckily, we see some uh, good initiatives between, for instance, Chrome and Firefox that want to settle on one uh, browser API and uh, uh, as they want to prepare for the work for the new web -type protocol. So that's why Puppeteer can automate DEF, like the latest Firefox version uh, now as well, as the protocols like became more and more similar. But ultimately, uh, browser APIs um, uh, are different for each browser. And even for some browsers like Safari, uh, they are not even accessible um, uh, by choice. And lastly, we have WebDriver protocol, the th third generation as a, it's the official standard for automating the browsers um, cross-browser. Um, it has advantages that allows you that the web driver protocol and web driver based tools allow you to automate the browser, uh, all browsers, even mobile. Um, however, they have the limitation as the first design of that protocol was not really suited um, towards uh, automating front end applications that are you know, heavily relying on React, Angular, Svelte, and Vue. Uh, so the design of that protocol, which was ultimately do everything that the user can do. Like is failing these people that have been building those heavy JavaScript application. Um, and so in the future, the new WebDriver protocol will uh, particularly pay attention to those kind of needs to allow not only you to do what the user can do, but also do what the developer would like to do to uh, be able to inspect a lot of more things in the browser. So for a long time, browser vendors like Salt Labs have been working on only supporting the WebDriver protocol. Uh, moving forward, there's, you know, every, for everyone, there's something different to it, and everyone wants to like something different. So there's a challenge how we want to, how these new frameworks are being supported in these cloud infrastructures, um, not only at Sauce but also in other browser vendors. And Nikolai will now go into the solution of what Sauce has been doing in the past. Yeah, thanks so much, Christian. Yeah, so kind of as Christian alluded to, that's why we came up with the Sauce Test Runner Toolkit. Um, Sauce Test Runner Toolkit is basically a more efficient uh, way to set up and maintain your test automation that will allow you to run in your framework of choice, Cypress, Playwright, Test Cafe, and Puppeteer as well. Um, we'll actually show you guys some examples of that uh, throughout our presentation, throughout our workshop. You guys will get to see how you can easily download, for example, a Cypress Docker image and then execute it in our Sauce Labs cloud, which it provides a few benefits such as the simplified setup and maintenance. Um, part two that you'll get out of the box is the parallelization, right? You'll be able to run multiple tests in parallel, whether through CI or on your local. We'll show you actually those approaches as well in our workshop. You guys will get to work hands on to make that happen. But then of course, the nice thing that we are noticing through the industry being test automation kind of experts working with customers all over the world is the need for um, everybody to put data into a single dashboard that can display results for the entire team, right? It's no longer, testing is no longer only about the QA team. Testing is now 
an entire organizational level effort from the developer all the way to the QA team shifting left and shifting right. And so these tools, uh, the Test Runner Toolkit, uh, allows us to bring all of that into a single dashboard where we can see all of the results and decide which actions we want to take on the different outcomes of the tests. Mm -hmm.